Think Burnley in the Premier League. Think two up top, long ball, crosses, set piece, low block. Then they got relegated. Benson Company took charge as head coach in the summer and now they play Guardiola ball in the championship and they will soon be back in the Premier League. So how has he done it? This is the team that Vincent Company has at his disposal this season. I've got them in a 4-3-3, although at times they've pushed Josh Brownhill forward and played in more of a 4-2-3-1 with Jack Cork uh, or and Josh Cullen taking over the single pivot responsibilities. Uh, in this squad, they've got a lot of different attacking players with different skill sets, some of which the championship hasn't really seen this season. Darko Shulinov is a North Macedonian international from Stuttgart that arrived in the summer. He's barely played. And Scott Twine scored loads of goals in League One. And he's a really interesting player. Not seen him yet either because he's been injured. Of the players we have seen, there are some absolute crackers. Anas Zaruri, I really love. He's a player who's away with Morocco for the World Cup. Excellent player, especially at championship level. And Manuel Benson is a really interesting player, a signing from Antwerp in the summer and a really good case study for the coaching that company has done because he has improved greatly in terms of finding space away from his opponents, getting in behind, and also they've roughed him up in training. So he's been able to deal with the championship much better. Scored twice at Bournemouth in the FA Cup for Burnley when they went and won there earlier in the season as well. And that's always a good sign when a championship team beats a Premier League team in a cup competition. Now, if you don't recognize a lot of these players, that's absolutely fine. There was a huge turnover in the playing staff over the summer at Burnley. 12 players went out. A lot of them were out of contract, but there was still enough to sell for a, a total of somewhere between 60 and 70 million pounds in terms of fees. They then brought in 16 players. Vincent Company had a big part of the charm offensive of bringing those players in as well. Uh, they included some really interesting loan players as well. Taylor Harwood Bellis is a centre back on loan from Manchester City. Nathan Teller is a forward on loan from Southampton. And Ian Matson, a really interesting left back who's on loan from Chelsea as well, all of whom have played a significant role in Burnley's season so far. So what does Vincent Company want his team to do? Well, he wants them to be possession-based. He wants them to be comfortable with possession in their own half, in the opposition half. He also wants to envisage that his team can score from any scenario on the pitch, whether it's an opposition goal kick or a throw in deep in their own half. The way they like to build up a lot comes uh, through this. So we've maybe pushed Josh Brownhill up. Ian Matson is always really high as left back and they sort of form this back three with Connor Roberts coming inside as right back and they form this five that can circulate possession and draw out a press from the opposition. If that then comes, by that point, Matson, Zerui and Benson especially are all there high up the pitch so they can work the ball up and get the ball into some really good spaces higher up the pitch. But if that press doesn't come, that's okay too because this five is able to move the ball up. Cullen is a really good um, setter of the tempo. Josh Brownhill has been a really creative force this season in a slightly different role to what Sean Dyche used to give him. He's been one of the best creators in the championship. And Matson has been incredibly impressive in terms of carrying the ball and creating opportunities. And he's got one hell of a foil in terms of Zerui. And then of course you have Jay Rodriguez. We all know him. He has been a wonderful forward in terms of almost operating as a false nine this season, dropping deep and combining, whilst also when he gets his opportunities, he's clinical enough to take them. Rodriguez could easily be a 20 goal a striker plus at championship level, um, but rather than focusing on him, company has wanted the goals to be shared around much more. So Rodriguez is top scorer with nine goals, but actually 15 different Burnley players have scored this season. That's one of the highest spreads in English football this season. And whilst most head coaches say, we all need to share the goals, company has actually made it a key component to his team that they do that. And part of that has come from Rodriguez dropping deep and linking the play, as well as being in the box and scoring the goals himself. A good example of that play was this goal Burnley scored against Hull earlier in the season. As you can see, Connor Roberts is just drifting inside as right back in this defensive three. We've got Jack Cork here, Josh Cullen is hanging around here. So that is the circulating five, whilst Ian Matson has pushed on really high at left back. Roberts drives in, feeds the ball to Cullen, who then pings a wonderful through ball through the space. And Matson is already on his bike to get in behind. Note Jay Rodriguez because by the time he gets to the penalty area, Matson is there to square the ball, Rodriguez slots home, 1-0, jobs are good. Un. And that was an archetypal goal that was exactly how company wanted Burnley to play earlier in the season. It wasn't all plain sailing. That game against Hull, Burnley actually drew 1-1. They had lots of games where they conceded late goals and they drew games that they should have won. And they had these gaps basically where 
with Matson pushing so high up, there was a big gap here for teams to exploit. And likewise, the gap here between Roberts and Benson on the right flank. Teams were able to get at Burnley and cause some issues. And also Burnley hadn't solidified enough really to make the most of their dominance, which was there in a lot of games. Since then though, they have tightened up. They've started actually um, having both fullbacks push up a little bit, push up higher. So Roberts will be almost just as high as Matson, and they've just altered the dynamic in the middle as well to cover some of those spaces. And what you've got now is a team that is aggressive in terms of uh, in transition they, when they lose the ball. They also don't lose the ball very often, so they keep it. And the opposition can't score if they don't have the ball. Burnley are one of the tightest teams in the league in terms of their defence and goals conceded, but they're also one of the tightest in terms of chances conceded as well. So overall, it's working. Of course, results, tables, goals, they're lovely. But so much about company at Burnley is about style. Our friends at Opta have produced a lovely graphic here which shows exactly what it is to be Burnley stylistically right now. Uh, we can see here the slow and intricate corner of play. That's basically the passes a team plays per sequence of possession, but also how quickly they move up the field with it. Manchester City are slow and intricate in the Premier League. Burnley are likewise in the Championship. Burnley under Sean Dyche, probably over here somewhere, right next to Luton, which is not always a bad place to be, but probably is here. So Burnley are the Manchester City of the Championship, which uh, used to be Norwich a couple of years ago. Never mind. There are loads of ways we can break down the style. One is with successful passes. You can see here the last six seasons of Burnley, admittedly in the Premier League, they didn't break through 10,000 successful passes. Uh, more often or not, for an entire season, they played fewer than 9,000. This season, admittedly in the Championship, they broke through 10,000 successful passes after just 22 games. So they're roughly on course to double the figure by the end of this season. Next, we have some lovely wheel charts by friend of the channel, Mark Carey. And here you can see again, Burnley in the Premier League in 2021-22 under Sean Dyche. Long passes, attacking speed very fast. Um, they also conceded high quality shots and not really anything dynamic in terms of their defending or shot creativity. Once we get to this season, again, admittedly in the championship under Vincent Company, you can see how aggressive they are in terms of their field tilt. Most of the game is taking place in their attacking third rather than their defensive third. They are um, not conceding many shots. They are creating them themselves. And they've also got a really good chunk of possession. Remember the, remember the image, remember the image. There, this is Manchester City from this season in the Premier League. Again, the Burnley of the Premier League. Does that work? Does that work in reverse? I don't know. But as you can see, very similar in terms of this Pac-Man shape on the, on the right. It's going to gobble up all those footballs um, in terms of how they, do, how they are dominating the football. And we can also look at it in terms of the uh, zones of control over the pitch. So these are by John Muller. Uh, who is uh, for another friend of the channel. We're all friends here. As you can see, Burnley's zones of control in the Premier League last season didn't really exist. The only place they had more than 55% of possession was in their own penalty area. These are the points at which the opponents would have more than 55% of, of the possession, which is basically the rest of the pitch. This season in the championship, we can see Burnley have much more control all over the pitch, perhaps a couple of issues behind their fullbacks deeper, but certainly also really good possession, more than 55% on each flank in attacking areas, real domination. Again, very similar to what Manchester City experienced in the Premier League. Not quite the same, it has to be said. Burnley have probably come up against fewer low blocks than Manchester City would do in the Premier League. And as a result, company has had to use more transitions and be a little bit more dynamic down the flanks. But it's fair to say there's obviously huge similarities in what the two teams are doing in their respective divisions. But the really impressive thing is that company has created all of this change in the space of just a few months. Yes, there's been a huge turnover in players and that obviously helps. That turnover was something a company also experienced at Anderlecht, where they finished third in the Belgian top flight last season. He thought that that was a good achievement. His bosses thought that that was an underachievement. They parted ways and now Anderlecht are in the bottom half of the Belgian top flight. There's been some great stuff from Andy Jones on The Athletic about how calm company is as a manager, how he carries himself, how he rarely talks about his own playing career. 
the level of detail in meetings, also double sessions, seven o'clock in the evening finishes for the players at training. Can you imagine it? He puts a lot of trust in his coaches. So assistant manager Craig Bellamy is also his attacking phase coach and works a lot in the attacking phase of play. Whilst Mike Jackson, who was actually in caretaker charge of Burnley last season after Deitch left, he looks after the defensive phase of the game. Also, Vincent Company has a close friend and personal assistant who drives him everywhere, including to training, so he can spend his time with his head in his iPad looking at videos. Probably not this one. The team also stay overnight at a hotel before home games and they get on a coach to turf more. All of those nice combination things that keep the team spirit ticking over. It's lovely to see. Now, of course, all of this is in the championship and the gap between the Premier League and the championship these days is growing. It becomes very hard to judge what that gap is like and how you possibly bridge it sometimes. Playing like this, getting promoted into the Premier League and then trying to do the same thing in the top flight with generally inferior players or finding a balance to be able to succeed in how you want to do things, I reckon that's one of the toughest jobs for any head coach in English football. But so far, Vincent Company has made an eye-catching start and a significant transition at Burnley. And one way or the other, he will be managing in the Premier League very soon. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.